Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Have you ever had an idea to share or that you just had, period, and you couldn't shake it? You know, ideas that followed you all throughout your life and the social norm said it's not the truth or it's not sufficient. Then my question would be, where is your loyalty? I mean, do you have loyalty in yourself or do you have loyalty to others who have taught you what they know? And so, you know, many of us have studied different religions and they focus on knowing self or as Socrates and Aristotle philosophers have said, know thyself. And one of the things that I find is, is that people forfeit, they forfeit knowing themselves. Why do you say that, Kim? Because they study everything that they see in most cases, but they don't study themselves, which leads us to one of the, you know, scriptures that the Bible tells us um, about study and show yourself approved. Well, how can you approve when you really don't get a sufficient understanding of yourself? It's, it's hard because then you live a life of false information. Um, and information, by the way, is formed within. So you're taking in information predicated upon what others have said and what others think, but what about your thinking? What about the power that you've been given, even the power to tread down the lion, adder, and serpents, right? Because one day you get to a place when you say, I, I don't really, know if all of this stuff is true or you know some of this just doesn't seem right that I've learned and you know you begin to dissect and look at yourself and the information you've taken in surely there are possibilities that you and I have had thoughts that others have not been brave enough to step out on and I'm going to give you a reason why theology gives us a framework to create a foundation, a foundation that's unshakable. And in many cases, we have had foundations throughout religion that has been shaken. We have the variations of a house on sinking sand, a house that's built out of wood and how they will be blown down or the waters will come and take that house built on sand. It's something to think about because maybe someone's house was built somewhere and it was sturdy enough to sustain the winds of change because it was what they were supposed to go through you know this is uh, mind provoking all right it was what they were supposed to go through but it wasn't what we were supposed to go through if my foundation was to be created out of another form of thought and perception then that means that what i'm being taught can be okay but i need to possibly get an understanding of what i need to add to uh, the teaching that i had rather than just standing on someone else's understanding of um thought process the perception because if I came here and I'm supposed to be a healer, then how can someone's information that is not a healer fortify my life as a healer? You see, and this has nothing to do with anyone's religion. Uh, their perception is to take us further. So theology gives us a form and a framework of foundation. It is not someone else's foundation. We have to seek the kingdom to find the foundation that we really need to add to whatever we've been taught throughout the religions, which brings us into spirituality. Spirituality gives us a transformative power to stand on the idea and perception we want to see manifested in our lives. Now, where do we find the desire to manifest? First, it's gonna be from the world, but then after we really see what the world is about, um, we're going to want to manifest from spirit. And you know, Jesus said, um, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So the spirit of truth is what we're working at. And I'm not trying to change anyone's understanding, but just get us to think more because we're at crossroads in our lives as a collective, as a uh, country, as a nation, as a world. And what we don't look at is the 
uh, respect for our own ideas. And that does not have to do with someone uh, disrespecting others. It's just the, the respect of looking at our own ideas and not following others because many are watching the news, but how can that transform you spiritually? Your spirituality has to do with your information that you take within. And that information is shaping you and molding you in a perception of thought, right? So here, astrology, it gives us the understanding of birth time and the date. These things zero in on things that we don't even see, things that we don't know concerning weaknesses. Here again, if you are a healer, in most cases, you will go through um, sickness to become or know that you're anointed to heal. Now you'll go through it in your body, but the astrological natal chart tells you that you have that ability. It will tell you in your chart. Why? Because it's going to show the areas of your life in those 12 areas that healers are born in or birthed in. Now, to sum all of this up, we have three areas that I presented today theology, spirituality, and astrology. The three areas. Um, one has not been wholly um, taken on by the masses. Um, and I'm not trying to convince you to take it on, but I'm telling you things that you don't see in your life are in that chart. And sometimes you have trailblazers that bring um, that information to the forefront. The Trinity was three. Um, Jesus, you know, was a part of that. You got Buddha, you got Krishna, you have information that we have not accepted that helps us to grow. Um, and that growth is spirituality. Sometimes we're staying in only one area of life and we're not getting the whole picture because of perception and also because of the information that we've been given. But when you begin to study to show yourself approved, then that means that you take on the confidence and the courage to go outside of limitations to find out what's missing because in most cases, something is missing and that's why we have not been able to cure whatever weaknesses or issues that we have in our lives, such as finances, such as relationships, such as um, losses, such as uh, family dynamics, um, prosperity, you know, everything is there and we have the ability to attain it, but we have to seek outside of the box. And, you know, if you don't come out of the box, if you don't take yourself out of the box, if you don't find yourself you know, in another place outside of the box, then you'll always be what they call that L7 because L7s are restrictions. It's a box, restricted. Why are you restricted? Is it because of other people or is it because you have no courage to change what you already feel, but you don't wanna change that thinking? And sometimes it's stinking thinking. Sometimes you're hiding behind the mask. People see you one way, but you're living another. This is duality and unity of self has to come together. So I wanted to give you a brief overview of my teaching. Um, and there are many out here that are teaching this way. It's not religion. You know, it is something to change a person's thought process of who they are behaviors because if you were born poor it doesn't mean that you have to die poor but it's a perception if you continue to live with the poor concept then you're going to die with that poor concept nothing will change and this is not just about finances it's about the way that you live your life and how you're profiting in your life in relationships not monetarily but on a harmonious level so you can go to our website at www.wealthyliving.org or, you know, uh, get the mobile link that's in the description, become a part of our classes and learn what you don't know about yourself or take on the idea of venturing out to learn more for yourself and spread the good news because the good news is, is that you don't have to be anything that you don't want to. You don't even have to be violated domestically. You don't have to be emotionally hurt anymore. You don't have to live in uh, a victim mentality. You don't even have to live 
the way that you don't want to unless you want to be in that situation. It's up to us. We are co-creators with God and the goddess. And some people don't like to hear what's true because they hadn't been informed by the people that they follow. But what if you're a leader and you're following? Now, I'm not saying you don't need a mentor, but I will say that sometimes the generations is coming after the mentor have more wisdom and understanding than the mentor. Why? Because the ages, the ancient ages of wisdom begin to seep up. They're weaker, but they have wisdom and the mentor can help shape them. Now, I'm a mentor that loves to help shape you, shape you on weakness and strength. You got to address your weaknesses and upfront and personal giving and blessing those that work with me. Come and be a part of us and recognize the age is, is changing. This isn't about a podium for one person. This is a podium for groups. We're moving into the area and the age of Aquarius and we're feeling the energy. A lot of people want freedom right now. That means that you're gonna have to change some things that you've been doing. So contact us and be blessed.